Hello and welcome to Victoria University's Graduate Online Information Series, where tonight we'll be discussing the Masters of Project Management. I would like to begin by acknowledging the Boon Wurrung and the Woi Wurrung of the Kulin Nation, who are the traditional custodians of the land on which we are performing this webinar for tonight. My name is Emily Bodie. I am the Future Students Programs Manager and joining me live from the VU TV studio in Footscray Park, we have Vinyaga Sama. Vinyaga, welcome. Thank you. Vin is a senior lecturer for our College of Engineering and Science. In addition to this, he's worked across key infrastructure projects in Australia, the UK and West Africa. In addition to this, he is also a fellow of the Australian Institute of um, Project Management and a certified practicing project director. Thanks so much for taking the time out to speak with us, Vin. Thank you. You've got an extensive um, experience in project management. Tell us a little bit about some of those international projects that you've worked on. Yeah, that's pretty the thing, you know, I got almost over 45 years experience in project management, mainly work on the infrastructure project around the world. So first I graduated from the UK when I was a degree in engineering. So I got a job with the, one of the biggest project in the UK is called um, one of the industrial project. Um, I was appointed as a junior project engineer to work on a project in terms of delivering that project. So I was basically responsible for, <clears throat> in terms of planning, in terms of execution, organizing material resources and etc. So I finished, I spent about three years working there. Then after that, I got an opportunity to go and work in the West Africa. So <clears throat> it's, um, <clears throat> I was involved in terms of delivering one of the biggest project, about 250 kilometers of a uh, road project. So um, that time it was one of the biggest in West Africa. So um, I was involved at that time, you know, when I posted there, I went there, it's basically, it was a big challenge for me. So everything new, the country is, I never was in Africa before. The people are different, the language is different, the culture is different, the complete the system is different. So I have to face enormous challenges in terms of getting involved in this project. So I have to deal with the local engineers to deal with them. So basically, I'm not very familiar with the, their working style. So somehow I understand, uh, I managed to deliver the project within uh, three or three and a half years. This was one of the challenging journey I had, uh, one of my journey um, I had during that um, working in West Africa. Then I get involved in a number of other projects uh, in West Africa. So um, that gave me an enormous opportunity. So that gave me create a lot of interest in project management to go and work uh, in the other sector of the industry as well. So from 1986 through to 2020, you must have seen a lot of change in the industry. What's been the biggest shift in your mind? Yeah, basically shift is basically we able to produce in a more and more competent project managers in for the industry. So at the beginning in 1985, where people very little knowledge about project management. So everybody trying to claim they are project managers, but they are not project managers. So basically what happened was over a period of time when they learned more about uh, failure, success and failure of projects. So um, they're able to improve what the lack of knowledge they required or what knowledge required they want to become a good project managers. Now you can look at the industry. So there are hundreds of uh, thousands of graduates. They are already working in the industry. They are fully qualified. So because this course provide the opportunity for them to become a good qualified project managers. So again, you can see for the past 25, 30 years, the project management profession has grown um, <coughs> very uh, at the exponential rate. At the beginning, project management is all about mainly for engineering and construction. Now, the every sector of the industry, they require project managers. So regardless of whatever your discipline you are, so um, we can offer a program that you can become an effective project manager. Mm. So you pointed out that the term project manager is something that most people are very familiar with, but not a lot of people actually understand what goes into becoming a project manager or, or what kind of roles those project managers take on. Can you give us a bit of an indication about what kind of tasks a project manager needs to undertake or, or what kind of role that they play in a project overall? Yeah, basically the project manager's role they have to take into a journey from start to finish, we call concept to completion. So every project they go to at a scope of that project, the scope transferred into some form of 
plan then you got to talk about in terms of in terms of execution finally they have to uh, deliver the project so this is the journey we talk about project management so when you look at in terms of sometimes project management is basically talk about one aspect of that project they call project managers so the, again the project managers role and responsibilities varies what uh, stage of the project they are invo involved in that in addition to that project manager they employ the various sector of the industry they play a different role so for example the client project managers so i do do some work as a consultant for client project managers the client basically what they need they need to support they got the idea they want to create and deliver a project so they employ a project manager the project manager is basically work on the behalf of the client the interest of the client they take it to the journey then they deliver the project when you go and look at the other sector of the industry construction industry so basically the project manager they are mainly involved in terms of physical delivery of the project again you can see the different different aspect of project management different role they play in terms of project management profession so project <laughs> management was traditionally an engineering type of industry but you've been saying that that's been evolving or changing. So what kind of skills are people requiring to become project managers if they are entering the industry from a, a background that's not engineering? Okay, so basically the, nowadays a project management norm is every sector of the industry. Every sector of the industry require project managers, regardless of construction or in terms of education or health or IT, every sector of the industry uh, require project managers. So because the project uh, is basically required <coughs> from certain thing to deliver, not only that, they expect to deliver on time, <coughs> on budget, and expected quality or required scope of that project. So in order to do that, they require project managers. So that's why if you look at it, someone working in the educational sector, so you want to become a project manager, they go to understand the educational system. On top of that, they go to understand the project management knowledge so they can take into the journey, they can de successfully delivering those projects. So it's going to be, the, what we teach here, deliver here is basically the process. So we normally, we look at the case studies in alignment to the each individual discipline, then they understand what this project management all about. <coughs> so we've spoken now a little bit about your background in the industry of project management, a little bit about what a good project manager needs to be able to do or the skills that they need to have to be successful. Give us a little bit, and, and I think it would be remiss of me not to point out that we are sitting 1.5 metres away from each <laughs> other, so there is a bit of an elephant in the room. Yeah. Give us some insight into what this project management industry is, is, is doing and coping with during this COVID-19 pandemic. Yeah. That's basically the <coughs> unfortunate thing this happened, we nobody ever expected. It's basically project management all about challenges. So project managers, they do understand each individual situation. They're able to devise things. They're able to deliver this, uh, the project or deliver, deal with the situation. So project manager, they got the skills and the knowledge. So they're able to understand what these um, issues are. So they're able to tackle that problem. So what actually happened in nowadays, this current um, coronavirus problem. So um, basically the project managers, I spoke with them, they go through some form of transformation process. So they got to change basically the, the way it used to work. In the past, they have to change in order to success, successfully deliver the project. So they have gone through in terms of resource transformation, in terms of technology transformation, everything going to be in terms of communication, everything has been changed so that they can deliver the project more successfully. Then they continue to serve as a, uh, continue to practice as project managers. Mm. So it's basically a challenge. So we don't know what's going to happen in the future. So basically, that's basically we got to look at it. Even we changed it and used to work in the university because of we able to transform our all these classes and everything within a week, we able to deliver them at home because the technology provides the opportunity. This course considers some sort of project management as well. Mm. So project management finding itself not in a dissimilar situation to all of us trying to make do and, and adapt as best we can to what we're calling, I guess, the new normal. I think in this current climate, there's a lot of focus on employability and what options people will have when we come out the other side or if we come out the other side, what employability is going to look like. What kind of trends can you anticipate within the industry or job opportunities are you, are you thinking are on the horizon for people looking at project management as a career change? Okay, for, for, for example, I can tell you that in the past, we used to get a several graduates from different background. I can tell you a couple of examples. 
some few years ago we had a student from overseas she is basically a health background she doesn't have any clue about construction so after completing the course he did few subjects related to construction she wanted to learn about more on the other side rather than the health side side so and eventually successful complete successfully complete the course and he she is now is working in the construction industry as a project manager so this gave you an opportunity for them regardless of whatever the discipline or whatever the background the car the course provided with you the knowledge and the skills and application which are required to go and work in the industry so that's why the our course have the flexibility in terms of that regardless of whatever the background or whatever the discipline so um, the we the course structure itself so basically facilitate for them to in order to picking the right subject so they can acquire the skills and the knowledge so they can go through the transformation process to get um become more experienced project managers mm. so moving on to the course structure as you've kind of touched on then i understand that the master of project management also has a number of other qualifications nested within it can you tell us a little bit about that okay master of project management is basically the we got um, a different uh, level or we can call them we normally the structure itself master of project management requires 16 you need to complete but um before that basically there are some student uh, some uh student they want to do only a lower level so basically they can start with a graduate certificate that requires them for to do four units then after that after completed if they would like to continue they can go to the graduate diploma then additional four units they required for them to do that then after that if you decided to go for masters they can do another eight subject so that will give you the master of project management is basically a journey is basically anybody enroll in master of project management the half way through they say uh, i had enough i got other commitment i cannot continue any more due to family commitment or other commitment they can exit with a graduate diploma or graduate certificate so it depends whatever they have completed at that point in time So our course structure got a lot of flexibility in terms of that so they can give you a pathway they can progress from graduate certificate to masters or if they have enrolled in masters they can exit from graduate certificate or graduate diploma mm. So in addition to that I would like to mention in our courses are accredited by the professional institutions that's very important for the 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 course um, what um, um recognition so we have got the two reg- um, accreditation bodies one of them is called australian institute of project management that's basically a local body that accreditation based on competency standard the other one we got a uh, pmi that's basically a global body that's basically based on academic type of skills so um, <clears throat> there are two different body we got a dual recognition or accreditation from local as well as international that clearly indicate that because our course is basically uh, recognized locally as well as internationally on top of that is the the project management all about competency how best they can do it what they know about it what skill they have got so that's why the australian institute of project management <coughs> after completing a masters they automatically they give a certifications they can practice as a certified practicing project practitioner practitioner so that basically tell you they are qualified enough to as practice as a project pr- practitioner so certification should be something that <coughs> potential students are looking into <coughs> quite closely when it comes to selecting a, a course in project management okay that's very important end of the day what the piece of paper what what sort of value is going to carry so end of the day we look at it this course certified or may be accredited by the professional institution then in terms of looking at the employability so even the person doesn't have any experience so when they go through the journey go through the process they got this thing okay they are certified they know the abcd project management they can started with the assistant project manager then they can progress from that level mm. so accreditation <laughs> very closely tied in with industry and and delivering graduates that are industry ready and industry capable what kind of connections have we formed here at VU with industry and how do they contribute to to the course materials for our masters of project management yes that's a good question about that it's basically our course started at the beginning is basically with a industry partnership so when we started this course about 30 35 years ago that time there's no other university they have project management course so even in australia they have another course in south university of south australia 
So at Victoria, none of the university institution, they never had any course. So we are the only one started the one of the oldest course in, in Victoria. <coughs> when we started, basically, we don't have anybody to teach project management. They don't know about project management. So what happened was we made an industry forum. So basically, industry and the institute, they get together. We had a forum. They say, oh, OK, we need project managers. So because industry desperately they need project managers, they shortage of project managers. So what they would come to an agreement, OK, we do provide all the resource support. So you provide all the academic institutional support. We can run the course. So basically, the course developed by the industry practitioners, what the industry needs are. So what the industry needs, basically, the young project managers to be trained quick as possible so they can integrate with the workforce. So what they are looking for, the three things they are looking for project managers, the project management knowledge. That talk about in terms of time management, course management, quality management, all the knowledge areas, how to manage key important things. The other one is called skill development. Skill development is only can come through working on a project. They want to see the skills. Because the industry, they don't have time to get these people to train them. So that's very important. The course, they want to facilitate how they can get into skill development. The other one is talk about the application. Application is an important part of any project. So basically, look at it, each the real life project, how to apply the project management principles so that they can deliver the project more successfully. So through that journey, application, they'll be able to acquire the skills. So all these things are all going to be facilitated by the industry. So the industry provide the lecturers what the knowledge requirements are. So in they are providing the case study project based on the real life project. That means the student have an opportunity to acquire the skills. So that's why the one of the strength of the course is this university. That's why the course still survive after 35 years because we got the industry partnership. If we don't have the industry partnership, so I can't teach about project management for the whole course. But end of the day, the student may think it's all academic jargons. We don't want to hear that. Somebody come from the industry, talk about this is all about project management. That's what they love it. Mm. That's the most important thing. So who are some of these industry connections that you've been able to foster through the last 35 years of, of kind of harboring and growing and yeah. developing and building this course into what it is now? Yeah, I can tell you that there are most of the project management organization operate in Victoria. They are somehow associated with this project. First, we started this project at this Lendlease, one of the major supporters of this project. Then at the same time, the Victorian government and all other government body, they supported these projects as well to, for the initiation of this course. Then after that, they, when they've grown up, there are several other companies. So basically, there are a lot of graduates coming from the course. They started their own companies. Now we talk about civil project management. That's one of the largest project management institute in the world. So they involve in terms of supporting the project. Then other graduates, they talk about in terms of in call project management. Then we talk about uh, Generate Pro um, uh, Property uh, Propriety Limited. All these people, they, these form by the, our graduate, they graduated from this course. So they started form, forming their own company. They started practicing as a project management organization. So what they did, they did in the course, they basically, they benefited this course because the course provided for them to get the skill, everything to start a successful business. So they rang me and think I want to contribute how best we can help you to run this course. They, I brought them back to the course in terms of getting the development of these um, units and in development in the curriculum in terms of structuring the course. So that's what we started. It's an industry partnership, the university and industry partnership, very important. Mm. So what we need to do, what we have to teach, what the industry needs are. So we can't go and teach what is in the project management book. We can't teach project management. So we're seeing a lot of former graduates going into the, the project management <laughs> field of work and then returning to help contribute to the curriculum. That must be a really good news story for you and, and the university and how our graduates are perceived in the workplace. Would that be an accurate summarization? Oh, of, yes, of, it is very accurate that? because the reason is, I can tell you that um, there are a lot of project, real life projects currently offered by the industry. Okay, they come and participate because the, one of the problem is one of the students asked me whether we got an internship or in terms of looking in terms of um, whether they got a um, placement. There's a question always there. So we got about 100 students in the class. So we ring up to every company, can you help us to give some you know, opportunity to work in your company? 
that's fine. You know, they could prepare to support us. They say what we did, we can't do, we can't give every student an opportunity. What we, our approach is basically different from the other universities. So we bring the industry to the classroom to teach them all about project management, offering the project. Okay, it's basically, if you send the student to the company to work, as they say, we haven't got time to look out to these students. So they bring, they come to the class, they offer a project, they go to train them step by step what need to be done in order to complete the project. So that's the journey, that's the way we normally train them. End of the day when they complete the process, so they fully understand what the process in terms of successfully deliver the project. Not only that, working in a class term environment in the groups that more effective because they learn group each individually they are working they are exchanging the ideas they are making a formal presentation so basically the more effective way getting these acquiring the skills rather than going to work in the industry to work on a on a one computer and come back is not going to work hmm. so our approach work very well even the industry they support us fantastic well i think i've taken up enough of your time we've got plenty of avid watchers and listeners online at the moment who are hoping to ask their own questions. So I might um, move on to uh, some of the questions that have come through online. <coughs> so we've got a question from Glenn here wondering whether the course will give practical projects to work on and whether you could see the masters as a step towards a PhD. Yes, this, um, what this is accurately, I already mentioned to you before, the, we use all real life projects. Okay, so we have a close relation at the moment we put a transurban. Transurban, they do give some, some research project. One of the students, they are currently undertaking a research project because they identified an issue within the transurban. They need someone to undertake a research, six months research. We have agreed and signed a memorandum of agreement, so the students already start working on it. Not only that, that's basically talk about the research. A part of your master's degree, they have to do a research project. Otherwise, the qualification will not be recognized. Then the other thing is basically those who are working on uh, other units and etc. the industry bring their real life projects. Okay, we used to have um, in the past, for example, I can tell you that uh, one of the projects they did the Grand Prix, Australian Grand Prix. So basically how to plan and manage and deliver the projects. So basically what the, the project like that, they normally plan for 12 months and deliver you only for three days. Okay, that's a way to plan for long-term planning, short-term delivery. Some mm -hmm. of the projects can require short-term planning and long-term delivery. If you look at the other project, we involve MCG Southern Stand. So one of the successful projects, because they have to complete the project within a certain period because they don't want to disrupt the AFL uh, mm -hmm. football season. So they planned in advance for a long period of time. So everything done off-site. Then they basically, what they done, when they also grand final is over, the next day they start the demolishing, they start the building. So before the next grand final st uh, season start, so everything completed. So this is the way they have done in terms of project. So I can tell you the another project, for example, um, the currently they are, the last semester they have done, we you they are building a new building in the city. So they have done in terms of conceptual design evaluation of that particular building, how effectively, how efficiently they can deliver the project. So these are the things very important. The project manager, they do know exactly how to do, what to do with that. So we mainly deal with the most of the subject uh, based on real life project. There are circumstances the client doesn't want to uh, disclose their name. So we have to modify some certain extent because to, we don't want to breach the privacy of the company. So basically, we align the project such a way so that the, if the project is remain same. We don't disclose who are the owner of the project. So this works very well. So we normally align with the real project. We basically talk about in terms of provide the training and provide the skills and the knowledge to deliver the project. That's what the industry expect. So end of the day, when this, um, when the, you're looking for a project management job, you can take the report and show them, this is what I, I have done, mm. that's a good plus for you to employ that. I can tell you another story. One of the students, he graduated, he's a, he did engineering degree here, then he got a master of project management here, then after that he got an MBA. He's a very successful person. So what he did, he did part of the project management course, he did a research project. Then he was, he, then he was um, applied for a position. 
he took the report, that report that relevant to the project, he put it on the table, straight away he got the job. They didn't ask anything else. <laughs> so these are the things that's very important to demonstrate whether they have the background, the knowledge to do that. Something that we touched on a little <coughs> bit was the fact that um, project management has typically been an engineering career but now that is changing quite a lot. We have a follow-up question here uh, for someone wanting to know whether or not people um, from another discipline, whether they need another discipline in order to become a project manager. So if someone had um, an IT degree, they'd be able to go and become an IT project manager. If somebody wasn't from an IT discipline, could they go on to become an IT project manager? Yes, that's a very good question. There are three things, you know, if you are a good project manager, they require in terms of the technical skill, project management skill, and uh, general management skills. Okay, so basically I've seen in the industry, people, they are managing the project, they have no knowledge about that particular discipline. Because they used to have a key people, part of the team, they're able to provide the supports. So in normally what they do, if you, for example, engineer, you might to manage engineering projects, so basically they go through in terms, they go to sound engineering knowledge, they can manage engineering projects. Okay, so for example, if it's an IT person, requires some form of IT background in order to manage the project. But not always the case. I have seen project managers, they have no knowledge about this expertise in the discipline, but they are managing the project more successfully. So if you want to manage an IT project, so you want to become an IT project manager, you have no knowledge about the IT information technology, still you can manage the project. But you need part of your team, you need a very strong team, they can provide you the technical support or IT support to the team. So basically, effectively, you are managing the project in terms of what is the scope, what is required to do that, mm. using the appropriate resources. We probably have time for one final question. Um, so this comes from Joanne, wanting to know what the difference between the graduate certificate in project management uh, and what the VET diploma of project management, what the difference there might be between those two, if you can speak to yeah, some but kind of um, VET basically, there. Yeah, VET basically offered by the TAFE sector. It's basically understand very basic level of project management. So when you look at a graduate uh, certificate, it's basically the university level. So basically level, that means more than a degree. Okay, that's the two different. Certificate, you learn about the very basic aspect of project management, talk about 10 knowledge areas and pros and et cetera. But when you go, that doesn't give you full understanding about in terms of management skill. To understand about the knowledge of project management is required for them, then you go and work on a projects. But if you want to become a project manager, go to the next level, you think about the higher level. We talk about in terms of part of a graduate certificate. We talk about in terms of how to work on a team, how to manage the project using the knowledge in terms of application in more things. We prepare them for to become a project manager. That doesn't mean those who are working on a wet sector, they can't become, they can become a project manager. That depends on how he's going to be trained, you know, how he's going to be, what sort of project. That's basically up to individual to individual. Okay? So I have seen a lot of people, they haven't got a formal qualification project management. They have done a short courses in a wet or short courses. Still, they call them as project managers. The question mark is basically how much skill, how much competency they have got in terms of managing the project. End of the day, I normally talk about that if you, if I am employing as a project manager, I will look for the competency. Mm. There are certain competency required whether they can perform the job. Brilliant. Well, I think that's all about all we have time for tonight, Bin. But thank you so much for taking the time to share your expertise with us. Sure. For everybody watching at home, at work, on the train, wherever it is that you might be, uh, we will be sending a copy of this recorded webinar out to you in the next couple of days. There'll also be a very limited number of opportunities for you to book a one-on-one -on -one consultation with Vin himself. So if your questions weren't answered tonight or if there is anything else that you wanted to query with Vin directly, you will have the opportunity to do that through the... Um, uh, recorded webinar email that will be coming out to you shortly. Thank you so much for joining us tonight and we hope to see you at the next instalment of BU's online graduate information series. Have a great night.